Hello friends. Today we shall discuss how to carry out life cycle cost analysis of a pavement. Life cycle cost analysis, which is also called LCCA, is a method for evaluating the long term economic efficiency of pavement designs. LCCA is useful for comparing project alternatives that have different initial cost and operating costs. It can also be used to consider how sensitive a project is to various factors such as design changes or the timing of maintenance work. It is used as a decision support tool when selecting payment type, determining structure and mix type, construction methods as well as maintenance and rehabilitation strategies. Typically, LCCA involves the following basic steps. Make initial strategy and analysis decisions. Certain baseline decisions, estimates and assumptions are needed to establish the parameters under which a LCCA can be carried out. It may include alternative payment design, determining analysis period and performance period for the project. Then estimate costs. In the construction project, there are two types of cost, the cost which are associated with owning agency and the cost which are associated with users and these are calculated for each alternative. Compare alternatives. Comparison usually involves expressing each alternative using a common metric such as net present value or benefit cost ratio and then analyze the results and re-evaluate alternatives. Results should be scrutinized for the most influential costs, factors and assumptions. A sensitivity analysis is often used to do this. Original design strategies in alternatives should be re-evaluated based on these results analysis in order to improve the cost effectiveness of each alternative. Few points before we discuss the procedure of LCCA. The first is that analysis is a study of the future. Economic analysis is not concerned about past events and improvements. It is essentially a study of the future. The analysis therefore should estimate future traffic, costs and benefits. All possible alternatives must be considered. The very basis of economic analysis is the selection of most attractive option among all available alternatives. Therefore, analyst should evaluate a number of possible alternatives. The third is all consequences must be considered. The investments on highway brings about a variety of consequences, some of which are quantifiable and some are not. For example, impact of project on environment is difficult to quantify, but it is important consideration. Therefore, it is important to consider as far as possible all consequences of a project. The fourth is analysis period should not extend beyond the period of reliable forecast. It is because of the reason that forecast beyond a reasonable period may involve uncertainty. Therefore, a period of 15 to 20 years beyond the completion of the project is generally considered appropriate. All future cash flows to be brought to the common datum. The present and future costs and benefits occur at different times. In order to evaluate them on a common basis, they should be brought to a common date and this is called discounted cash flow and it is based on the concept of time value of money. And this time value of money I have discussed in another video. You can watch that video for further clarification. Total cost of a project has three components. Cost of construction of facility initially, periodic cost of maintaining the facility over its design life and road your cost. This cost of construction includes the survey, investigation and design costs, land acquisition cost, construction cost, physical contingencies like unforeseen items and unforeseen increase in cost not attributable to escalation and unforeseen increase in the quantities and supervision, quality control and administration charges. 
Similarly, cost of maintenance include the ordinary repairs such as patch repair, pothole filling, dressing work, etc. Periodic repairs such as renewals and resurfacing. Any emergent or special repairs which are required. Operational expenses such as traffic lights, traffic aid post, lighting, policing, etc. And supervision and administration charges. The LCCA level of detail should be consistent with the level of investment. And when dealing with highway cost, it is necessary to phase it year by year. Benefit from a highway project are also many and they can be divided into two groups. They are direct benefits and indirect benefits. Direct benefits are those which are easily quantifiable and indirect benefits are difficult to quantify. The Direct benefits include vehicle operating cost saving, value of travel time saving, value of saving in accident costs, saving in maintenance cost. And indirect benefits are mainly social benefits like improvements in administration, law and order and defense, improvements in health and education, improvements in agriculture, industry, trade and mining, improvements in environmental standards, and appreciation in value of land adjacent to roads. IRC SP 30 2019 provides details of road users cost. It considers factors which affect road user cost and these factors include roadway factors like payment width, payment surface type, its riding quality as measured by roughness, vertical profile, horizontal geometry, number of junctions per kilometer. Vehicle factors like type, age, make, engine horsepower and power weight ratio and traffic factors like traffic volume, traffic composition, speed and congestion. All these factors are considered and different equations are given in this special publication to estimate the road user cost. The vehicle operating cost components are fuel, lubricant, tires, spare parts, maintenance cost, depreciation, etc. And IRC SP 30 provides equations for determining these VOC components for each category of the vehicle. The travel time saving covering various types of road users are also given in this special publication. And the value of travel time for small car, big car, two-wheeler, ordinary buses, deluxe bucks for different types of highways are given for different categories of vehicles in this publication. Now while considering this travel time saving in the economic analysis, the average occupancy of a big car is taken as 4.28, small car 3.23, two-wheeler 1.71, ordinary bus 30 and deluxe bucks 40. The next is accident cost. This is also a part of direct benefit as it is possible to predict the reduction in accidents on a section of the road after its improvement. IRC SP 30 provides cost of different categories of crashes. Fatal crash is estimated to have economic cost of 13,25,049 rupees and minor injury has 46,680. When a highway is improved, speed will increase, traffic volume will change and that will reduce the congestion on the road and it will also change the vehicle operating cost. Again, SP30 provides equations for estimating time related and distance related congestion effects of different categories of vehicles on different types of roads. Here it should be understood that the relative influence of individual life cycle cost factors on analysis results may vary from major to minor to very insignificant. The analyst should ensure that the level of detail incorporated in an LCA is consistent with the level of investment decision under consideration. There comes a point of diminishing return as more and more cost factors are incorporated in the LCCA. And several economic indicators are available to the analyst. Benefit cost ratio, internal rate of return and net present value. These are economic indicators and any one of them can be used to carry out 
life cycle cost analysis. I have discussed all these three in another video. The complete procedure of life cycle cost analysis is done in eight steps. Established alternative payment design strategies for the analysis period. Determine performance periods and activity timing. Estimate agency costs. These are positive cost. Estimate user cost. These are considered negative cost. Then develop expenditure stream diagram. Compute net present value. Analyze the results and re-evaluate design strategies. Let us discuss these eight steps here. The first is establish alternative payment design strategies for analysis period. And typically, each design alternative will have an expected initial design life, periodic maintenance treatments, and possibly a series of rehabilitation activities. It is important to identify the scope, timing, and cost of these activities. LCCA analysis period should be sufficiently long to reflect long-term cost differences associated with reasonable design strategies. The analysis period should generally always be longer than the payment design period, but it should be the same for all alternatives. Second step is determine performance periods and activity timing. Performance life for the initial payment design and subsequent rehabilitation activities has a major impact on LCCA results. It directly affects the frequency of interventions by the agency and in turn will affect the VOC during construction and maintenance activities. IRC 82-2023 can be used to plan routine preventive and periodic maintenance of flexible payments and similarly IRC SP 83 for cement concrete payments. Then Estimate agency costs and these are taken as positive cost. The first step in estimating agency costs is to determine construction quantities and their unit prices. Agency costs include all costs incurred directly by the agency over the life of the project. They typically include initial preliminary engineering, contract administration, construction and supervision, construction cost and then maintenance cost. It also includes maintenance of traffic cost and can include operating costs such as pump station energy cost, tunnel lighting, ventilation, etc. etc. At times, the salvage value, the remaining value of the investment at the end of analysis period is included as a negative cost. Then fourth step is estimate users' costs and these are considered negative costs. And user costs are the costs incurred by the users over the life of the project. User costs are in aggregation of three separate cost components, vehicle operating cost, user congestion cost, and crash cost. And as I told you, the method of estimating all these components are given in IRC SP30. And that can be used. In the LCCA of payment design alternatives, there are user costs associated with both normal operations as well as work zone operations. And all these must be properly estimated and considered. Then fifth step is develop expenditure stream diagrams. Expenditure stream diagrams are graphical representation of expenditures over time. They are generally developed for each payment design strategy to help visualize the extent and timing of expenditures. This is a typical expenditure stream diagram for a project design. Normally, the costs are depicted as upward at appropriate time and they occur during the analysis period and benefits are shown as negative cost or as a downward arrow. Then sixth step is compute net present value. I mentioned earlier LCCA is a form of economic analysis used to evaluate long term economic efficiency between alternative designs. Once all costs and their timing have been developed, 
future costs must be discounted to the base year and added to the initial cost to determine the NPV, that is net present value. I have covered this method in another video and you can watch it to understand it fully. Then analyze the results. Once completed, all LCCA should be subjected to a sensitivity analysis. In a sensitivity analysis, major input values are varied while all other input values remain constant and the amount of change in results is observed. It allows the analyst to subjectively get a feel for the impact of variability of individual inputs on overall life cycle cost analysis. Now, for example, this table shows you the results of analysis of sensitivity of NPV, that is discounted rate, on two alternative design, alternative 1 and alternative 2. Now, here the total NPV of both alternatives reduces with increase in the discount rate. The effect is different on two alternatives because amount and timing of future cost will differ between alternatives. Now here, alternative 1 is more expensive than alternative 2 at discount rate of 5 or less, whereas alternative 2 becomes more expensive than alternative 1 at higher discount rate. You can see it in a graphical form also and you can find out what is the discount rate where NPV of both alternative can be put at same value. Similar analysis should be conducted using other input variables such as agency cost, user cost, payment performance lives and hourly money value of user delay. So that is the seventh step. The eighth step is re-evaluate design strategies. Once the net present value have been computed for each alternative and limited sensitivity analysis performed, the analyst needs to step back and re-evaluate the competing design strategies. Now, it should be noted here that the overall benefit of conducting a life cycle cost analysis is not necessarily the LCCA results themselves but rather how the designer can use the information resulting from the analysis to modify the proposed alternatives and to develop more cost-effective strategies. LCCA results are just one of the many factors that influence the ultimate selection of a payment design strategy. The final decision may include several additional factors outside the LCCA process. And these factors can be local politics, availability of funding, industry capability to perform the required construction and agency experience with a particular payment type, as well as the accuracy of the payment design and rehabilitation models. So that is how LCCA is carried out for a highway projects. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, you can write in the comment box.